Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Good Owl Games, the place where I love to give you two player insights into some great games for game night. So do you have a fondness for the Scots? Economic games? Well if so, here's five things I think you need to know about why there can only be one Clans of Caledonia. <laughs> Clans of Caledonia places you in 19th century Scotland as head chieftain of your own clan. You'll be able to make all sorts of goods that'll produce more advanced items throughout the game. And you're going to want to use those items to complete export contracts. Plus there's the ever-changing market to lend you a hand. Enjoy storing your whiskey as you compete to produce, trade and export over five rounds. Thing one, what's this game all about? So Clans of Caledonia is a game that's set in the Scottish Highlands and you are a chieftain as head of your clan and you're trying to produce various types of goods. So while the theme here could be really about anything, I do feel like they made the most of it. So the clans you play with all have unique names. There are different items that you can make that are kind of fitting to the theme. So it's not completely devoid of character here. In fact, the fun part is that, you know, this might be an economic game, but you might find yourself taking on a Scottish accent or perhaps using some Scottish catchphrases while you play. So there's room here for imagination amidst all of the math and working stuff out. Now, similar tiles to this, um, the first thing that comes to mind for me would be something like Smartphone Inc, which is a game where you can buy and trade goods, um, but you're a capable of setting the prices. And I feel like that's a big part of Clans of Caledonia too. Thing two, what kind of actions are you going to be performing on your turn? So Clans of Caledonia is pretty straightforward really, in the sense that you are producing goods, then you're going to hand them in as part of contracts um, for victory points. So on your turn, um, what will happen is that you'll be able to use your money to set up your industry and your production items out on the board. So for example, you might want to put out a cow if you want to get milk in the production phase, which comes a bit later. And um, once you've run out of money, you move on to this production phase um, where you will make all the things that you had yourself set up ready to make and you will gain the items. Um, you'll also gain some money back so that you'll be able to continue this for five rounds, this whole building your economy and then being able to gather the goods from it. But the question is, of course, well, what do I do with the goods? Well, this is pretty straightforward because you're going to want to do these contracts. These are worth victory points. Um, you're only able to have one at a time and they will require specific items, usually kind of advanced ones that you have to go to a bit of effort to make. Um, the good news for this is that you don't necessarily need to be able to make every single item in the game. There is a marketplace where you can go to buy and sell items. And this means the prices fluctuate as people buy and sell things. So that's kind of an interesting thing. But overall, this game is very tidy, very well put together and kind of forgiving too of your mistakes. And I think if you enjoy a game that's kind of goal orientated, you're going to really like this. Thing three on the table. So I think this one is a really gorgeous looking setup. Um, it's these bold and bright colors. You've got these awesome little animal meeples and then you've got your own player board upon which the meeples go. It's all very tidy and strong and colorful. I think it looks fantastic really. Um, and how long does it take to set this up? I think it's pretty quick, um, if you, especially if you're ignoring how long it takes you to put out all of your tiny meeples on your player board, because that is a little bit time consuming. It takes about an hour for two of us to play, but I have played this a lot, so we're very familiar with it, I think, at this point. And the rulebook's pretty good to boot. Now, replayability wise, while there are a variety of clans with their own abilities for you to play as, which I liked a lot, there's a good variety as well in the different kind of um, objectives that you have to hand in. Um, and apart from that, there's also the modular board so that it's not the same every time. So while I don't think there's massive differences each time you play, there's just enough here to keep it interesting. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? So I'm not particularly impressed with the box art for this game. It just seems a little bit generic for my liking. It doesn't make the game really stand out. But what is unique here about the box is its size. It's very skinny and short and it fits in all sorts of slots in my board game collection that most of the games won't go into. Um, so I'm pretty impressed here at them for thinking outside of the box so boxes can fit inside boxes. Yeah, that. 
Now, the art thing here is that while there isn't really a lot of it to judge, um, really there's just your characters um, that give you abilities to play as. Um, and beyond that, it's just this use of kind of bold and bright colours. And to be fair, it kind of works. I, I, can, I, I like how this game looks without it having a whole ton of art in it. So I guess that says something. Um, the component quality here is really, really good. You follow these meeples and tokens and resources, all of which are 3D and really, really nice and fit lovely into the game. It gives it a very tactile nature. The board, the board feels very 3D, I suppose, with all of these giant pieces placed out upon it. So I like that a lot. Like overall, this game feels very deluxe um, while also feeling very understated. And I quite like that. Thing five, is this game actually any good? Well, certainly I'd like to think so. Um, and this kind of comes back to, you know, how I'm here making this review, which is that I pulled this game off of my shelf to play about a week or so ago and was appalled to discover I hadn't played it in about three years. Um, and also that I hadn't reviewed it either. And what's amazing about this statistic is the fact that I've owned the game for four years total. And I'm the sort of person who goes through their board game collection very quickly. I'm very ruthless and very rigorous. I'll cut things out. I'll, I, want, I want to keep my collection um, to be games that I, I really want to play or I think are really, really special. Um, and I won't hold on to anything just for any old reason or just because I, I own it or I want to have a bigger collection. So when I say that Clans of Caledonia survived all of this for four years um, that's a rare and special thing for any board game to have achieved and when I sat down to play it I was reminded just how brilliant it is and why it survived all of this time so I thought I should come and tell you all about it. Um, the first part of it I think that really makes the game stand out is its mechanics because they are kind of they're very to the point they're simple but they're also really fun um, there's something really entertaining about um, making your own cheese um, I just I love the fact that you can be doing whatever it is you want to be doing towards winning and so can everyone else and you kind of you're kind of in your own little world really building your own little empire um, and it's enjoyable going through these motions like the main part of the game I suppose is really completing those little quests um, and figuring out you know how to reverse engineer what the quest wants so that you can go and build it um, and I like that I know what my end goal is um, I found it made the game much more enjoyable for me knowing where I was trying to get to um, rather than having to come up with it on my own um, the other good thing I suppose about this and probably the most not notable feature is this market board where prices will change and it's a really nice way to interact with other players without having to go head to head. So you know if you've got something to sell well do they want to buy it maybe I won't sell it right now that kind of idea um, and I think it's just kind of yeah gentle interaction I'm a fan of that. The only thing I'm not a fan of in this game is its length. You play for five rounds and I always feel by about round three I'm finally just settling into the game, getting all my stuff together, you know, getting ready to make things and then the game is pretty much ending. Um, so this is probably, you know, a personal problem on my part um, but I can't help but wish that I had longer with the game um, and I guess that says something about it too, doesn't it? So yeah, overall this is a really tidy um, and well thought out game. Um, and one I really, really enjoy, and I think you might too. So here I am telling you about the joys of Clans of Caledonia. Do I think you should have Clans of Caledonia in your collection? Well, obviously, yes, I do. But make sure that you enjoy something economic, that's straightforward, that's kind of fun to play and looks cute on the table. You've been watching Good Owl Games. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you have any comments or queries you'd like to make about Clans of Caledonia, why not shout them off in the comment box below? I'd really love to hear from you. So tune in again next time for some more short and hopefully informative board game reviews.